Okay, I think we are live. Hi everyone, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey Live. Obviously, I'm Vim PF, host of No Nonsense Whiskey. Today, uh, I'm on a solo flight and I'm going to be talking about the kind of bottles that I have in my collection, as small as my collection may be in comparison to some people's, but uh, I keep a nice modest collection of things that are basically almost open. So, so throughout the show, I've got them broken down, but they're all on the floor here. So I'm going to be doing some very unprofessional leaning forward, but I'm sure we don't mind. And I'm going to be uh, also for people that stick around till the end of it, I'm going to be doing a bit of an O to Aquavite and doing a very small quiz. How about that? So uh, let's just say hello to a few people we've got in. We've got uh, nine viewers, actually, but we've got John Marshall, who was here early. Thank you, John. McCallum Fine and Rare, always in the uh, live streams. Excellent to have you. Go Habs, hello to you. Stephen Aldridge, hello. Scotch for Dummies. Uh, he says, cool shirt. Yeah, this is a shirt I always wear on my live streams and my kind of off days. I've got my, my kind of professional tops that I wear usually. But this is the shirt I love to wear because it's the kind of dark side of the moon, Pink Floyd vibe going on. Uh, and I got this from Swally Shirts. I got it for like a tenner. It was great. Uh, a couple more people just dropped in. Christopher Malloy, he's just dropped in. Uh, Whiskey Wolf, formerly known as Ebhead. He's in. Connor Strang, thank you for joining, pal. Phil, uh, he says, bus is delayed as hell. This is quite the distraction. Well, hopefully it isn't delayed as long as the stream is on, but, you know, keep watching, keep watching. Chris Beaton is in. Whiskey Whistle is in. Uh, he's at work, bless him. Yeah, it's a bit... We, I try to go live at a good time for everybody, um, but obviously the further you are behind me, the harder it gets to be. Uh, and all oh, we've got uh, Her Sky Marshall, uh, sorry, Her Sky Marshall in today as well. So I better talk about a couple of things I've got on the table. Now I'm going to be, oh, it's here. Phil's boss is here. Excellent. I'm going to be looking down at the comments down here, but I'm going to try and converse with the camera directly as best I can. Talking about some things I've got on the table, but I'm going to be moving things around throughout the show. Uh, and talking about what I've got, and I've got all the bottles down here, and I'm going to be bringing them up sort of one by one. We'll have a little bit of a chat about them, and I'll see what's going on in the uh, in the comments when we're talking about stuff. But uh, for now, let's talk about what's on the table here. Uh, these are my little bottles. I don't usually drink these very much, but you'll see why, if you can see them on there at all. The camera looks a bit fudgy. But these three here are Cotswolds Distillery test batches. So, like, this is their new make spirit bottled at 63.5%. And uh, these two are their 20 month spirits and that's X red wine, X bourbon. I don't tend to drink these very much because I like to keep them as a bit of a uh, kind of uh, a showy piece. When people come around and they're interested in whiskey, I like to show them what unaged or so young, extra young malts are that non whiskies and things like this. Yeah, new make. So says so Scotch World Dummies. I've also got one more new make, and that's the King's Barn Spirit, which is a, uh, I guess, Lowland. Is it Lowland? Yeah, it's Lowland. So it's um, uh, it's now in Fife. It's one of their first distilleries they've got in that area. And this is more English whiskey, the Norfolk, uh, the uh, St. George's Distillery, and that's a Marks and Spencer's bottling. But um, they're all very nice, but I don't tend to drink them very often. Um, I should start, really, but these uh, these new makes are quite heavy going. but um, they're good, they're good whiskey. I've also got a cat literally just underneath me. Uh, if he wakes up, I'll show him later, but he's getting on a bit now, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna disturb him too much. So I'm gonna be a bit tentative when I'm leaning around. But I'm gonna be putting stuff down, picking stuff up. And of course, as I said, for the people that are just dropping in, uh, after I've done what I'm doing my collection wise, I'm gonna do a little bit of a quiz that's kind of a joke. Um, it's instead of uh, Agravita, because he's on his summer holidays, but um, so it's a little bit of a joke, but hopefully it'll be interesting just knock some bottles over right so the first bottles i'm going to bring out for you today are ones that i've recently just finished and some reviews that i've recently just done um a couple more people have just said hello so i'm just going to say hello to them tony evans hello whiskey throttle thank you for coming in Dwayne large thank you very much one of my loyal uh, patreon subscribers thank you very much for coming in uh, question from McCallan Fine and Rare. Are the Cotswolds mini bottles from the three pack tasting pack released a year or so? Yes, they are. Um, so those three were the Test Batch Series 1, and then they did a Test Batch Series 2 just before they released their actual whiskey, but I didn't pick that up. It's about £60 for the three, so it was quite expensive, uh, but it did contain their um, Isla Court Cask finish. Finish. It's exclusively matured in the Isla Court Cask, which would have been amazing. I have tried it, and it is good. Uh, right, so let's try some empty bottles. 
So recently, you'll probably have seen the reviews I've just done on these, but uh, this is the Eagle Rare, 10 year old. I was quite impressed with that thing. It's um, When I opened it, I wasn't too bothered about it. It was a bit uh, slow going, but as it went down, it got, uh, got better and better and better. Excellent thing in the end. I was a bit disappointed to see it go, but I got a really good price on that, and I'm not sure I'll get another good price like that again. Also only just covered, the Elements of Isla Pete Foolproof, 59.3%. Can't recommend this thing enough. I'm not sure about the age of it, to be honest, but it, it must be quite young. But this thing goes for like 30, 35 pounds in the UK. It's only a half litre, but it's, it's, it's really good stuff and it's quite heavy hitting, quite heavy hitting. Ah, this thing, the Highland Black eight-year-old. Now, this did really well on the channel, actually, because it just won another award for being one of the best whiskies in the world. But that's obviously not an actual fact. What it did was won a gold medal in its class. And it wasn't competing against much else. But it, they also don't compete against each other. It gets a... Uh, it, it does get a bit of a bad rap, but it's not even that great, to be honest. I didn't like it that much. Garabs is asking where my recycling bin is. I know, I should have done a kind of mini recycle reviews. These actually, I'm not going to recycle them because I've got a bit of a project going on where I reuse bottles and turn them into something else, which I'm going to be making a few videos on, but that's going to be like winter sort of time when they come out. So look forward to that because I'm going to be teaching you guys how to turn your empty bottles into something a little bit more creative than smash glass. Small bottle, Glenmorangie original, Glenmorangie original. It's pretty good stuff. Um, I'm not too bothered about it anymore, but it was a good, a good thing to go back to. You know, good thing to go back to. It's a bit of a palate resetter, like your uh, Glenfiddich 12 year, something like that. Good to remind you where you came from. You know. Now we're getting onto some good stuff. One of my Glengoin 10 years. I had two bottles of that in pretty quick succession. Reasonable stuff. It's not the best in their range by any stretch of the imagination, but it's pretty good. It was pretty good. Ah, uh, my last one of the uh, empty bottles, and that's the Strathclyde 25 Douglas Lang single grain Scotch whiskey. Really, really quite good. And it was pretty good value, really, as well. It was about £56 when I bought it. Sadly, it didn't last very long because it was so good, so creamy, if you like, that um, I ended up drinking it quite quickly. And I sent a lot of samples out to people as well. But that's my kind of empty bottles. As I said, I'm going to be turning these into things at some point in the future. So uh, do stick around to the channel and subscribe and all things like that if you haven't yet already. I'm assuming you have if you're here. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I've got two more bottles I want to do before we move on to something else. These, in fact, this is what I'm drinking right here. No, it isn't Hey Club, Clubman. It's a de-labeled bottle. I actually quite like the bottle. Nice little blue thing. But this is one of my Infinity bottles. And this is the other. Obviously a much better bowl. But this is my kind of scotch and miscellaneous. And this is bourbons and American. So essentially what I do is every single bottle I finish, I have two drams at the end and I have one for me and I have one for the infinity bowl if I liked the whiskey. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. This one isn't tasting too great at the moment. So I'm waiting until I finish some of my other bourbons and things before I chuck them in there. This one is tasting marvellous at the minute. It's got some Islas in there now, but this has got everything in it from, it started out actually a half bottle of, Cl of Hay Club Clubman, and it was really quite disgusting. So I started adding whiskey to it. And what I do, I don't know if you can see the level on that thing now. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. I drink from it quite frequently, and when it gets down to a certain level, I start topping it up again. So it's got everything in there, 30 years old, some 40 years old stuff, mostly kind of around 18 to 12 years, or 12 to 18 years, that sort of thing. But I know quite a few of you keep Infinity Bottles or Solera Bottles or whatever you want to call it. So I'd be interested to know what you guys do uh, in, in the kind of stead of this. I mean, I don't really keep a track of what's in there. I know some people like to put a long list. But because I drink from it so frequently, I can't really tell you what's in there anymore. It's just an amalgamation. of Depending on what I chuck in there, sometimes it's better. Sometimes I chuck in the new make just to bring up the ABV a little bit more because... When it gets to 40% or below, if I chuck in something else that's not quite whiskey, it changes the taste a little bit. But yeah, so I'm going to get rid of these. Hopefully you're all doing okay at the moment. 
what are you guys drinking? So uh, Scotch Predominant says he keeps a log. They keep a log of theirs, which is a pretty good thing to do, I think. If you're interested in that sort of thing, keeping a log is fine. Um, I say I, I drink of mine too frequently, so the, the log becomes irrelevant after a while. So uh, I, I didn't do that, but um, it's a good thing to do. Uh, Paul Gibbs has just joined in. Thank you, buddy. Uh, John Marshall says, I have two bottles of Solera. Never bother taking notes, but I have a cognac and brandy too. So it's just a spirit drink rather than a whiskey. Fine. If it works, it works. I think it's like it. I like to think of it as the whiskey that never ends that you like. Why not? Um, so I'm not sure what order I'm going to do these in, actually. Let's do the kind of crappy bottles first. So I've got two of these. I'll bring them out. They're getting a bit dusty now, bless them. Famous Grouse. That's got some sellotape on it somehow. Uh, famous Grouse and the Famous Vincent, which, if you didn't know, that was my full name. Looks back to front on this screen. Is that back to front to you guys? Or is that uh, the right way around? Either or. Uh, struggling to drink. I haven't actually opened that. That was a wedding present. But um, struggling to drink that. I will do it. And I'm going to do a full review on it. It's not too bad, but it's just a little bit too cheap for my taste buds now, unfortunately. I hate to say stuff like that because it makes me sound a bit like a bit of a pretentious person, but never mind. Um, but having said that, Whiskey Dick, if he's in, J&B Rare. Now, I did cover this and that, actually, um, just before Christmas when I did a blended break, uh, breakdown, something like that. Uh, and I actually don't mind this too much. It's got a little bit more depth to it than that has, in my personal opinion. In fact, but my favourite was The Teachers. So I'm going to do an, a, another review on that as well at some point. And finally, I, I put it in me in, in this kind of category because I it doesn't really fit in any other of my categories. This is the Uncle Jukes. Bit of a strange one, this one. It is uh, Brewdog. I'm sure most of you have heard of Brewdog. They are making the whiskey, but this is a Scotch single grain. And it's aged exclusively in American virgin oak casks. So it's kind of like an eau de bourbon, but uh, a Scotch. Why not? Well, there's a lot of reasons why not, but it's, it's okay. I'm enjoying it. It's not as good as bourbon, to be honest, but uh, when I get through to it, I'll get through to it. Let's have a wee sip and see what's going on. McAllen Fine and Rare says, no salaring on my end. Fair enough. Uh, it's, it's not for everybody, but it's, um, I find it quite interesting. It's a good thing to do with your last dram. Some people just like to invite friends over and kill a bottle once it gets below the label or something like that. That's fine. Go Habs uh, says, I had two bottles I didn't care for. Canadian Club 100% Rye and Tin Cup. I actually got a bottle of that. Uh, mix them together and now enjoy my blend. Perfect. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. Blending's a funny thing. If you've got the, the time and, and the, the inclination, I keep loads of sample bottles and things like that. And that's a perfect way of doing blending on a kind of micro scale to see how you get on, especially if you're doing uh, like Isla or peated malts. A very, very, very small amount of, uh, of peated whiskey can just overtake a whiskey, like a blend or whatever. Some water, some water. I think it's best to power through because I've, I've got actually a surprising amount of bottles considering earlier I said that I don't have many. But I'm going to do them in regions rather than worst to best or something like that. I think that's the best way of doing it. So. Let's do a scotch next, shall we? Uh, I'll do my Speyside, actually, and I only have three bottles of Speyside right now, which is a bit shocking. The Glenlivet Founders Reserve. There's a few people I know that uh, aren't a big fan of this, myself included, but I, uh, I haven't actually done a full review of it yet. I did a versus the 12-year-old, and that was one of the first videos I ever did. If you uh, get a chance after this stream, I'd go and check that out because it's not. Uh, it's not the best video in the world, but it's, it's old and it's an old video and it's quite funny now to watch considering the, the quality of the microphone and things like that. Uh, this is the Tesco's finest aged 12 year. Now, that's going to be lost on a lot of people uh, because Tesco's is a kind of mainly UK based thing. Uh, and this, but this is a uh, space side single malt selected by Richard Patterson which might tell you all you need to know to figure out the distillery. I don't know. I don't actually know what it is, so I'm not even going to guess, but it's uh, just one of those things. 
Whiskey Throttle is uh, just waking up from night shift. Yeah, I've noticed you've been uh, having some uh, night shift drams. You've been doing some live streams recently, which is uh, it's pretty cool. Having breakfast drams. Can't even have a breakfast jam. Sorry, lad. That's a that's a real shame. Uh, Arrow Y eight. It's just founders. It's not awful. It's just cynical. It is. It is. It's it's sold at too high a price for what it is. It's not as good as the twelve that uh, the UK market can't get anymore. They got rid of the twelve for us, and they they seem to be selling it elsewhere. And they replaced it with this, and it fundamentally isn't as good. It's a reasonable mole. It's not disgusting in any way, shape, or form, but it is overpriced. And uh, it, it it just does not have the same quality. It's not has the same quality. My final space side is this one. This interesting little bottle. I'm not even sure if you can see. I've got quite bright lights now. This is the Tormor, 14 years product of Scotland, obviously, but it's exclusive to the French markets, and that's where I picked it up. Dusty in a uh, French supermarket, and I got uh, two bottles of it. In fact, one still in France, ready to come back to when I actually go back over. And uh, this one I smuggled back in my case. So uh, as you can see, that's going down quite nicely. It looks like it could be sherry influenced, but it actually isn't. It's um, it's it really quite uh, a refreshing whiskey. But I'm going to be doing a full review on all of these three at some point in the future. I'd like to say this year, but it's getting tight now before Christmas. So we'll see. A few more people have come in. Uh, Scotch Four Dummy says, use it as a mixer. Always, if uh, stuff isn't that great, it either goes into a new Solera bottle or it goes into mixers, or I give it away to people that are doing reviews in my local area or some such. Uh, in fact, Gentleman Dr Grim, he uh, used to get quite a few of my bottles. Unfortunately, I haven't seen him in, in real life for a while, but um, he used to get some of my crappy old bottles and he used to give me some samples of his stuff and it all keeps everything going. Uh, John Marshall says, the 12 is back here now and I've noticed in some stores but for over 30 quid, cheeky bastards. Yeah, that sounds about right. I haven't seen it on the shelves yet. I think I saw uh, Mark and Mike. He had both of them recently. I know he likes to go back there every now and again to uh, back to his old controversial video. But um, it, if I can get it, I can get it. Because the 12 used to be one of my favourite whiskies, And I haven't drank any 12 for probably four years now. So I'll be interested to see. That's a lie. I did it when I first started the channel two years now. So uh, I'll be interested to see if my tastes have changed. Let's uh, get rid of these. Loch Ness is in. He says, hey, all. Uh, McAllen Fine and Rare says, gone in Germany as well, but now back. Okay, that's interesting. I, I haven't looked out for it, I'll be honest. I haven't looked out for it, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I will look out for it now because I'd be interested to see that. Yeah, uh, as Gohab says, we never lost a 12 in Canada. That's one of the things that irritated me. Foreign markets carried on getting it, but uh, in the UK it was gone gone um arrow y says uh, found new glenlivet 12 in supermarket cheaper than founders perfect i mean i don't know if it's the same or if they've altered the uh, the way that they've made it or altered the barrels or whatever to make it cheaper i'll have to check it out that's something i didn't know so i'm gonna i'm gonna have to do a bit of research on that and get a bottle for sure gentleman grim's saying the uh, the one oloroso 12 month still got the bottle that was one of the worst whiskies i ever tried i'm sorry to say not as bad as the um, Fujikai, which I also sent to that little group, but um, it's uh, ruined his uh, taste buds now because he also gets sulfur. I think that's what you have to do. You have to taste the whiskey that's extreme on sulfur, and then you'll start picking it up. Or, you know, don't because it ruins your entire whiskey life because there's a whole heap of stuff you can't try anymore. Bummer. What do we want to see next? Do you want to see some more scotch, or do you want to see some uh bourbon or do you want to see some european -y worldwide whiskey stuff drop something in the comments let me know uh, i'm gonna take uh, two seconds to read a couple more of these but let me know what you want to see next so i'm gonna get some up here it might actually be quite a fairly quick stream but that's okay i think mm. john marshall says my local co-op sold off the 12 and it was discontinued for 15 quid a bottle so i scooped it all up sold it onto mates kept a couple of bottles perfect i didn't do that i knew it was coming but i was really early on on my youtube channel money was tight so i didn't have a lot of budget to be buying loads of bottles so although uh, i still don't make a lot of money off the channel it's something so i uh i get to buy a few bottles every now and again thank you very much for watching the adverts so more scotch everyone's saying more scotch two people saying more scotch that's fine i've got at least 
three more regions of scotch. So I'll probably do two at once, eh? Why not? Uh, so I'll do Ireland's and Isla. Uh, now I'm going to be do a bit of a cheat here because I've actually got two bottles that aren't in home right now. So I've got the boxes, but not the bottles. And that's the Bamor 10. Airport exclusive. That's why the box is massive. Uh, and it's pretty good, though. It's kind of really heavily sherried, probably heavily coloured as well. I haven't, I haven't really looked into that sort of thing. You know me. I'm not too bothered about the colour of whiskey. Uh, I, I know enough about whiskey to know when I'm being fooled by colour. Uh, uh, but for me, it the kind of taste is king, you know. Taste is king. Why, why bother messing around? If it tastes good, even if it's got like 100 litres of uh, e, E150A or whatever it is in it, then who cares if it tastes good? And it's cheap enough, of course. Uh, and of course, Highland Park, Einar. Uh, this I have covered already. I did a versus with that and the Sven. Travel retail again. Um, but I took these around to a friend's house the other day and I forgot to bring them home. Lucky him. So I will get them eventually uh, and I'll do my review of that and I will finish this bottle at some point. Uh, Tabasco. Tabasco, thank you. Uh, funky is a language you only learn step by step. Why not? Why not? Okay, so uh, let's check out some more islands stuff. Yes. Uh, why not? I'll do more. High I've got loads of Highland Park. So Highland Park Harold. That's the next one up from the INR. Not a litre anymore, but still quite expensive. Um, I got this, actually got this and this and the previous one as presents from my brother-in-law. And um, I, we all agree that I think he's going to stop here um, because that costs quite a lot of money. And I don't think he'll be doing any more. Charlie Nash is in the house. Hello, mate. Um, he, he also does streaming, but not on YouTube. He's on Twitch. It's uh, Cult of the Red Barrel Gaming. Um, good friend of mine. So uh, check him out. I think you should do that because he's uh, he could use the support. Um, Kevin Bryant is also in. Hi, all. Not had any whiskey for a couple of weeks. Just opened a bottle of Glen Scotia 10 year. Perfect. Oh, I'm being attacked by a moth. So if you can see one flying around, say hello to it. <laughs> uh, Rasvan Oral Drum Brava. Don Brava, Don Brava, good evening. Good evening to you. Charlie says, I'll stop at you. Bless you. Bless you. Right. More islands. Jura Origin. I picked this up again because this was really cheap. It was like £12 or something like that. It's not great, I'll be honest. Um, if you can get a wee bottle like this for, for quite cheap, perfect. The only one in their range that I've really liked so far is the Superstition. A bit smokier. Uh, but I will cover that. I'll do a review of that at some point in the future. This is good because you're going to get to see some of the stuff that's coming up. Uh, this, actually, I just covered. This is the Glenmarnock Isla. Another Aldi whiskey, one of the other ones that won an award. I have just covered this. This thing costs £17 in the UK. So that's something like $24, something like that. Absolute steal. Um, it's casks that have been beat into the inch of their lives so there's hardly any any life left in it it's been colored no end but it's a nice smoky pt whiskey that's really quite cheap and that's all that really matters right it's um but it's not pretending to be something it's not and it's uh it's pretty good it's pretty good scotch for dummies there off to make dinner for the fam no worries pal hopefully i'll be on a little bit later still so if you do get time to come back just to remind everybody, new people coming in, I am going to be doing a little bit of a quiz after these bottles. Not a big one. It's a bit of a joke. Some hard, some not. But uh, it's uh, going to be just taking place while uh, while Roy is off on his holly bobs. Oh, cat's alive. Let's say hello to the cat, shall we? Ah, there he is. Bless him. He's getting on a bit now. He's furring up everywhere, so I'm going to get fur all over my T-shirt. Cat's name is Brian. Go on, off you pop. <laughs> one one more bottle of islands and that is the fabled highland park 21 mm. L just lovely absolutely lovely i got this for a steal 100 pound for the bottle which is a lot of money it's the second amount of money i've spent on a bottle second most amount of money i've spent on a bottle the other one is coming up later and i have reviewed that one so i am going to review this one i'm trying to take my time on it but it's going down too quickly <laughs> Dwayne says it's a bit yes it is a big cat poor thing he's um going to the uh the vets for his weight gain um but he's also getting fed by a lot of my neighbors and I've been trying to tell him not to but you know 
You can't tell some people. Definitely got attacked by a moth then. Does the cat get, get into those bottles on the floor? No, the, the bottles aren't usually here. Um, oh, he's seen the moth. Leave the moth alone. I don't want a dead moth. Kato's been joined by, yes, he has been enjoying the barbecue season. So have the rest of us. Um, yeah, Highland Park 21. Absolutely perfect. It's now a little bit too expensive for my liking, but um, it's probably the last bottle of it I'll ever own, I should imagine, unless they do something about their prices. Let's get rid of some of these. And I think so that we don't murk the scotch, I'm going to do something else. Because we are smashing through this, smashing through this. Put that down there, put this out of the way. What's, what are people saying? What are people saying? Is the Highland Park, 12 year old Highland Park old bottling still available in the UK? Um, it is, it's still on shelves. You you're talking about the old, like straight bottling, like this, this sort of style. It is still available, but uh, it'll go. Once it's sold out, it'll, it'll go. And then you've got the new, the new one, which um, I haven't reviewed, and I probably won't, to be honest, which is all you need to know about it, I guess. But um, it's just one of those things. It's one of those things. I've heard that the uh, the new 12-year-old 46 percenter that's limited, that's uh, pretty good. It's meant to be pretty good, but I haven't tried it, so I don't know. Uh, Whiskey Wolf, looking forward to the review. Haven't opened my 21. Get it open. Get it open. Uh, Gentleman Grimm says the 21's been discontinued. I don't know, to be honest. Um, it's one of those things I don't really I don't really keep up on the news until I'm covering a bottle and then I do all my research in one hit. So uh, I'll have to check that out because um, I just don't know. I just don't know. Uh, whiskey Jason says, uh, what did I miss? I've just been covering a lot of my whiskeys, Jason. So you haven't missed too much. Um, just the bottles I've got at the moment, but the bulk of it's still to come. So uh, lots going on. So I'm going to start with my bourbons now. Um, I've not got many. But uh, I say bourbons, American whiskey, because some of these aren't bourbons, of course. Tin cup, Colorado whiskey for this funky little tin cup on the top, which is an absolute massive gimmick. Wouldn't drink out of that to save someone's life. But um, it's a nice little thing to have. It's got a nice little bottle. I don't mind it, to be honest. It's quite cheap in the UK. It's about sort of £24, something like that, maybe even cheaper. Uh, and it's solid whiskey for the price. Solid whiskey for the price. Uh, Gentleman Grimm says, new, new HB12 at 46 is not, not worth 61, including potions package. No, it isn't. Um, but you can check out Maltman Mike just did a review of that with Gentleman Grimm. Um, actually, all of them together in one room for a change. So uh, worth checking out, worth checking out. Um, right, two, two of the same here. This is not something that happens to me very often. I've got two Elijah Craig... 12 years now the reason why i've got two i am not waiting for the 12 to disappear to flip this contrary to popular belief um i don't tend to get involved in that that seems like it's a lot of effort so i bought one to review and one to save for when i finally get hold of the replacement for it which is the uh small batch now i can't i can buy it anytime i want to be fair but i just haven't got around to it yet um, I'm not uh, I'm not heavily buying whiskey bottles at the moment because as you can see I've got enough to be getting on with and if you can see up here as well I've got loads of samples to be getting on with so I don't need any new stuff yet um, but when I get to it that'll be sealed and ready to go and it'll be a nice comparison video but that sits on my set usually back here just to remind everybody that it once had a 12 years on it I'm gonna catch up with the comments after I've brought all these out Woodford Reserve, just the basic one, pretty solid. It's not that cheap at sort of thirty-five pounds, but it's it's pretty good, I would say. This one is label batch zero four four eight, bottle number zero one one zero. That means anything to anybody. Again, not not too knowledgeable on that at the moment. I uh, will pick up my knowledge on it when I do the review. So here's something I just covered actually: Jim Beam Double Oak. Actually, I quite like this. It's not fantastic, but it's about £18 in the UK. Again, really quite cheap, same as that Isla. But um, you get something that's remarkably better than the white label, without a doubt. Without a doubt better than the white label and worth the extra money. Definitely worth the extra money. I have reviewed that. Check out the review on that. Finally, for the American whiskies, good old TX blended whiskey. If you are in Texas and surrounding states, you are a lucky duck because this thing is 
just not exclusive at all. It's just amazingly available. But I can't, you can't get it outside of America. I, I managed to get it, obviously, um, through my, my little channels. But I don't think I'll be getting another bottle anytime soon. My pal who smuggled it over for me is, uh, is no longer heading to Texas regularly. That's why I haven't opened this yet, because it's being saved uh, for a time when I might actually be able to get it more regularly. And I can pop this and enjoy it. But it's got super amounts of vanilla on it. Uh, it goes really well with vanilla ice cream, actually. But they do all this amazing stuff like this bottle cap here is uh, if the light stops reflecting off it it's like a baseball or something um or was but it's it's reclaimed leather and they punch that out and they make the caps themselves and everyone is individual so you can keep that uh, and they do in texas people are collecting them and they do all different kinds they do boot leather that they do they do baseballs they do everything that they can get their hands on why not that's my American whiskey. It's not many at the minute. I've just gone through quite a lot, actually, um, and I've got rid of the bottles already, so I can't show them to you, unfortunately. What are people saying over here? What are people saying? Uh, Tabasco, I'm at home, so I can't send a super chat. Sorry, Evan, next time. No problem at all. Um, super chats are obviously always welcome. Any any help for the channel is always welcome, but it's, uh, it's never compulsory. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to run adverts on the channel uh, just to just to get a bit of income going. But um, and I've got no problems in telling you guys I earn something like twenty pounds a month off uh, off AdWords. So it's uh, it's not enough, but it's enough to keep the channel going, and it helps me buy my editing software and things like that. Absolutely none of it gets spent on whiskey at the moment. Poor me. So that all goes uh, out of my back pocket, which uh, I'm sure you'll all be devastated to hear. But yeah, thanks for for the offer anyway. Um, I uh, appreciate the gesture, no matter what. I'd rather you guys just turn up. Uh, Gentleman Grimm says, need to try that tin cup sample that I sent him. Do it. I mean, you won't be blown away, not by a long shot, but it's it's not too bad for the price. Eric Waite is in. Hello from California. Hello, my friend. Um, it's pretty midday-ish there for you, isn't it? Like maybe two o'clock in the afternoon or something. Uh, Charlie Nash, my friend, uh, he likes his bourbon, so um, he's into that. I actually keep meaning to get him some good stuff, maybe just a sample or two here and there, but um, I've got some stuff for you to try. Eric says, for some strange reason, I'm reminded of Ty Lopez's video. This is my guy. Yeah, basically, that's what this is today. This is me just running through stuff. My uh, collection video for uh, January 1st did quite well, so I thought I'd just do a live stream on it instead rather than uh, do the editing. Why not? Bit cheeky, bit cheeky. Uh, Chris Bean says, Woodford's um, pretty tasty. Yeah, go have this peanut. I'm not sure which one you're talking about there, my friend, but um, peanut, why not? uh charlie nash says smoky notes in the jb double oak deserve respect without a doubt i think there's there's some extreme depth there extreme depth sorry, more depth than the white label which have it's nothing it's just uh paint like brown paint thinner poor thing uh i'm probably missing some stuff kevin bryant says uh tried a few more rise this summer and i thought uh woodford reserve rise okay yeah rise I, I haven't covered many rise in the channel it's one of those areas i'm not too well versed in i'm getting better at it it was like isla before uh, I didn't really like Isla whiskies a while ago, but now I'm more and more into them, and I'm hoping that rye will be the same because I find it a bit hot, a bit spicy for me. But never mind. Paul Gibbs asking, "What are people drinking?" Excellent question. Did ask a bit earlier, but um, let's talk about it again. Why not? Uh, Deanston Twelve for you. Me, it's my Solera bottle, which I'm just about to finish. So um, that I should let's crowdsource it out of the bottles you've seen today. What do you think I should pour? For my next dram let me know in the comments and i'll, I'll get a fresh glass for whatever it is because i'm sure you'll make me open something expensive uh poor old mccallum fine and rare is having a dry month until august 22nd not worth it my friends not worth it dry months aren't worth it at all i find just cutting back is what's worth it have dry days in the week but a dry month it just makes you drink more when you go back into it Go Habs, I'll be enjoying some Pete Monster after dinner. Perfect. That sounds perfect, to be fair. I think I have some Pete Monster on my sample shelf somewhere. Someone did ask me to go through my samples at one point, but there's hundreds of the bloody things. We'll be here all day, so I'm not going to do that today. If there's enough demand for it, maybe I'll uh, I'll do it another live stream another day with that. Let's finish this. All right, we've got two people saying Highland Park 21. I knew it was going to be that. But as uh, friends of the show will know, you don't have to twist my arm very hard to make me want to drink some good stuff. 
because at the moment I'm covering a lot of basic whiskey. I'm covering a lot of cheap whiskey. And that, unfortunately for me, means I have a lot of cheap whiskey in at the moment. And I've hardly anything amazing. There you go. Nice. It's not, not too healthy, but it's uh, not too healthy. So let's, uh, let's go into it. Oh, it's like an old friend. Uh, Eric says, have you changed your views and habits on adding water to whiskey? Yes, is the short answer. Um, I haven't changed my habits for on-screen stuff because uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't really like, help the, the ethos of my channel and that's short, sharp, snappy reviews. Uh, and I don't want to drag it out by um, adding water because adding water is highly subjective. It, you add the amount of water that suits you rather than a recommendation to other people. Like Ralphie will say two teaspoons, whatever. So for me, I, I don't think it, um, I don't think it will help my videos, but off screen, I am adding whiskey almost every single time. And I probably will add a drop or two to this. Maybe, maybe. I haven't got a cowbell, but cowbell. Thanks, Charlie Nash, five pounds. Have one on me, lad. I sure will. Thank you very much for the super chat. You are incredible. You are incredible. Let's try some of this and uh, then I'll put these away and we'll move on to my next one. I think I might save my last bit of scotch till last. Mm. Right, let's chuck these away. And as I'm putting these away, it uh, McCallan is saying it, um, that his giving up whiskey for a month is good for his liver, which you are, you're not wrong there, my friend. You're not wrong there. Uh, sometimes in this line of, I don't want to say work, but in this line of work, I do drink an awful lot more than I used to. Uh, maybe I should start spitting, but never mind. Right, so I'm going to do world whiskies i haven't got many of these things either but um these are stuff from all over basically this is the only japanese whiskey i've got in at the moment the cheetah i uh i just covered this actually it's grain and it's um it's pretty good pretty good it's not cheap unless you're in an airport if you go through an airport you'll get this for 30 to 32 pounds something like that pick it up then why not but um don't buy it at retail because that's nearly like 50 quid and that's just ridiculous 50 quid for a, a basic grain with no age statement on it no chance uh one of my favorites at the moment you guys hear me banging on about it all the time the cotswolds this is their inaugural release from 2017 and hopefully i'm not sure if you'll be able to pick that up on the camera yeah you can i uh got the owner ceo and um, whatever uh dan shaw to sign that for me so and that's obviously an open bottle as well that'll just be kept forever i think in my house why not why not but yeah really quite nice only only three years old but it's it's a blinding whiskey uh charlie asked asking what happened to the one i gave you i reviewed that and finished it so that's gone so uh yeah head back to head back down the list and check that one out i even gave you a shout out on that but it's a that was a good whiskey good whiskey the takatsura pure malt you're talking about uh scandos next scandinavian whiskey this is the mcmira rooks whiskey it's uh it's not cheap to get in the uk but i got this brought back from sweden and uh, it was it was worth worth the money really it's 41.4 percent, but it's a basic malt a basic malt um pretty good pretty good i think what they're making i'm enjoying it's uh, right up my street they're uh rook i want to say rooks whiskey i can't remember what it's called now but the smoky one is really quite nice and i'll be having that one out um Last bottle, and then I'll go through some more comments. This one uh, will be right up the street of Whiskey Wolf. I'm not, I can't say the name. I've tried to say the name so many times, but it just doesn't compute to my uh, phonetics. Udni, Udni, I think it is. It's uh, the ship's name that's on here. It's the Norwegian single malt, and this is one of their four year old ones, the Series 3. You can't buy this anymore, but they're not putting much out. It's by the Norsk Brennery. My Norwegian is pants. So sorry about that, but I have covered that as well. More information on the review for that if you want to go and check that one out. Those are my world whiskies that I have right now. So more comments, more comments. I, I caught someone saying cheap was good. Yeah, Chris Beaton says cheap is good in my book. Me too, pal. Me too. Um, it is nice to have some really good stuff though every now and again. Uh, Whiskey Wolf says I'm drinking Cola Zero. That's a very thin mouthfeel. Yeah, 
I don't uh, I don't blame you for saying that at all. No uh, no midweek drinking for you. Probably a good thing. Uh, Eric's drinking Diet Pepsi, watching while working. Yeah, I say it's quite early for you. Uh, the Gentleman's Club. Uh, I don't think I've seen you in the chats before. So uh, welcome, welcome. The cheetah isn't worth it. The it, the rarity to foreigners is the appeal of it. In Japan, there is an abundance of on the shelf, and it isn't flying off as its counterparts are. Taste not that great for me. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, it isn't worth it for full price, without a doubt. Without a doubt, I think it's worth trying though. I I I've got a bit of a a soft spot for grain whiskies. I think they're a bit underappreciated, but um, they're pretty good. Jason Whiskey Wise is in. Thank you very much for joining, buddy. We're um, blimey, we're we're only about forty five minutes in, but yeah, uh, this this is never. Even though I'm going to do a bit of a quiz after this, it was never intended to go to be a kind of aquavite replacement by any means. Um, I like to do live streams when I have the opportunity, and tonight was. The only time this month I could do it, unfortunately. So that's why I'm in. But I am going to steal his quiz idea just as a bit of a uh, kind of ease the withdrawal from uh, Aquavite not being on. Razvan says, uh, How do you? I need to read that before I read it out. How do you watch after the open bottles that you have? Can you share some advice? I know that in time content, yeah. All right. Okay. So he's asking how I look after my bottles when they're open. Um, the short answer is I don't really. Um, I tend to I tend to drink my bottles quite quickly, which is why I don't have many bottles in. I share a lot of it as well, so they don't stay very much. Uh, and I also I usually try a bit and then leave it for another few months and try a bit. What I do do is figure out the like if if it's starting to taste different to me, like bourbon for instance starts to taste better for me as it goes down. So I always take two or three drams out of it and then leave it for months. But if a whiskey starts tasting a bit odd to me, I'll uh, I'll just kill it. I'll uh, get some friends round, or I'll take it over to a friend's, and we'll just kill the bottle. And that's the way I deal with that. But but it hasn't really happened to me. Um, I don't tend to keep whiskies long enough. The the longest one I've kept is something that's coming up in a little bit. My most expensive bottle, and um, it still hasn't gone bad for me yet. So I'm I'm okay. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. Uh, people saying hello to Jason, of course. Hey hey hey. Uh, Charlie Nash is off. Thank you for checking out the stream, mate. I'm really glad to have you in. Um, I'll be on your Twitch channel soon enough. No problem. Thanks for the super chat as well. Much appreciated. Uh, Gentleman's Club says, coincidentally, I just watched your Super Nika revival review and clicked on your channel to see what other reviews you had up. Sure enough, I showed you a live. Brilliant. YouTube's doing its business for me. Thank you very much for checking it out. Hopefully, I'm uh, I'm not putting you off. But um, do subscribe to the channel and do some ch check out my uh, reviews every uh, Monday and Thursday, and occasional things like this. Uh, I do love interacting with new people. And obviously old people. Not to discount my old faithfuls, of course. Of course not. Right. So, I've left the largest selection till last. And that is my Highlands, surprisingly enough. I've got more Highlands bottles than anything else right now. But I think that's because that's where the majority of my really expensive bottles are. So uh, they've lasted long for a while. Um, Jason's asking me, what's that blue bottle? I have to I should pop this out so I can see. Uh, I'm not sure where you're looking, pal. Um, give me a, uh, a note about where that was. Is it on the shelf or is it somewhere else? I think Roy's watching them. There may be a quiz after. Yeah, there's going to be a, there's going to be a quiz for me. I'm going to do a quiz. Roy's um, sourced on a uh, on a beach or a sun lounger somewhere, so I don't think he's going to be in any fit shape to be uh, doing anything else. <laughs> but, uh, Mandlo Masako says, uh, "Hey, I'm from South Africa. Johnny Blue or Chivas Regals Altis? Um, I don't know about the Chivas Regal Altis. Johnny Blue, I'm not too bothered by. It's okay." Jason, are you talking about this? Let me know if you're talking about this. This is the McMira Brooks Whiskey. I did a review on it. Check out my review and you can see more about that. But it's uh, Swedish. Swedish. Does he mean the Infinity? Yeah, the one I, it's the one I just put down. He, he, he can't mean my Infinity Bottle because that went down ages ago and he wasn't watching then. Um, right, let's start on my Highlands stuff. Start. Let's start cheap, cheap and move up. So I'll do two at once at once these are 
two more Glen Marnocks. You can see I've got an Aldi near me. Aldi Superstore special, sherry cask finish, and rum cask finish. It's supposed to be the same whiskey. Obviously, it's like the same as the last one. It's battered casks. It's heavily coloured, um, but these are £17 each again. And um, you really can't complain. If you like sherry finish, it's perfect. This thing is really quite nice, the rum cask finish. Pen Marnock saying, hey, Uncle Jukes, yeah. A bit earlier on, that was floating around there. That was one of the first ones I brought out. You have to go back and check. But hey, Ben Marnock, thanks for coming in. Uh, just to let you know, ahead of time, Vin, I'm coming to your house. Perfect. Do it. Come round. Come round. We'll get drunk. It'll be great. We won't live stream it, though, because uh, getting drunk on camera is not a good idea. <laughs> right, Ardmore. Controversial, this one is, because I know some people really don't like this. Ardmore Legacy Lightly Peated. I love this whiskey. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's not the best whiskey in the world by any stretch of the imagination. £20 in UK supermarkets when it's on deal. It's everything that people hate. It's no age statement. It's 40%. It's probably coloured to the end of the earth. But it's cheap and it's good. So I don't care, basically. Um, so the, more, the less snobs that buy it, the more there is for me. Put it that way. Ardmore Legacy. Decent drop. Decent drop. Don't discount it. While we're talking about Ardmore, let's bring this one out. This is something I've been saving because I'm going to do a live stream with this at some point. This is the Claxton's The Single Cask. And this is a, a charity bottling, which unfortunately you can't get anymore. Of, as a, I'd redirect you there. And this is another Ardmore, eight years old and finished, if I'm correct, uh, finished in a peated Isla whiskey cask. But this was done for a drama day. If uh, you remember a drama day, he doesn't really do many things anymore, but he's still doing his 500. Um, he works for Gordon McPhail now, so he's got, got himself a good job. But he's going to be coming back to the channel at some point in the future. Um, and uh, we're going to be reviewing this. And hopefully I'll get people to donate a little bit to his charity. But if you want to check him out now anyway, you can just Google a drama day and find out what he's doing for his charity stuff. But he's trying to get like five grand or something like that. It's uh, definitely a worthy cause. It's for Heart Foundation or something like that. I can't, I can't remember exactly, but uh, we'll go through that next time. <laughs> so what people are saying, uh, you have enough. Neighbours getting drunk and the coppers showing up. Yeah, you must have seen that. Brilliant. Um, that's a, a bit of a story, but um, uh, a few months ago, I heard a bit of a ruckus outside. Ruckus. And um, I live on usually a quiet street, and I'm be the one making all the noise now because I've got my windows open. But there must have been, no word of a lie, 100 to 150 people out in the street from an overspilled house party that had got um, announced on Facebook by accident. It was absolutely insane. There were cars parked everywhere. There were people everywhere. everywhere. I couldn't get out to my car. Um, there were people standing next to my door smoking weed and things like that. It was just absolutely insane. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and if anyone follows me on uh, on Instagram, you would have seen pictures of it. So next up, this one here. I did buy a bottle. Actually, I was sent a bottle and I uh, I paid the guy back for it. Gary's Whiskey Reviews, he picked up a bottle for me. After I did my Aquavitae Blind Challenge, which I just like to say I was still the first who did that and one of the uh, the better scoring people. But I was so massively surprised by how good this whiskey was and how cheap it is. In, in my neck of the woods, it's about £30, but you can get it for about £20 to £25. And it's uh, it's just superb. The Tomatin Legacy. Tomatin Legacy. Jason, did they share the weed? Yeah, not with me. But they uh, they, they passed it around outside my windows, which was pretty gross. I won't lie, I wasn't happy about that. Uh, next up, Glengoyne Cask Strength. I did just cover this. This one is a hefty 58.8%, uh, so it's not one to drink most evenings for sure, but um, it's just brilliant. I tried this at a whiskey festival maybe a year and a half ago and uh, bought it, and I uh, yeah, like tried it and bought it immediately. Bought it immediately, straight off the stand, because it's absolutely superb. Um, haven't got the next one, but I did get batch five when I did review this. I got that in my sample pack. Uh, Eric says, have you thought about replacing your world map on the wall with a Scotland map? It might make for better scenery. 
Uh, I have two maps I'm considered framing. Um, I haven't actually, no, Eric, um, because I uh, I want to try as many world whiskies as possible. I think there's enough people just doing um, scotch at the moment. Something I've got that you can't quite see is this this here. I'll get I'll get it off the wall and put it back later. But I'm going to get this in the shot when I redo my set. Hopefully you can see this without the glare. That's my ring. But this is um, a Scottish map in the words of all the distilleries. I'm gonna, you're going to get a bit of glare off the uh, off the light, but sorry about that. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. My um, my wife bought me that for Christmas or a birthday one year. Um, but yeah, I am planning on redoing the set at some point. Um, if you're interested in helping out of that, by the way, uh, my Patreon is live and I'm more than happy to accept new patrons from a little as dollar a month. And uh, every penny of that goes straight back into the channel. Um, I buy uh, new lighting equipment, new cameras, uh, and eventually I'm going to do a new desk and decorate a little bit in here as well when that gets up to a certain level. But yeah, if you're interested in that, of course, do check out my Patreon. But of course, same with um, Super Chats. That is never, ever uh, compulsory. Um, there are some benefits for doing it. Uh, I do um, early release videos and um, merchandise and things like that for people who are on Patreon. But that's it. Um, my videos will always be as free as advertising will allow me. And I, I, I'm always sorry about the adverts, by the way. Do feel free to skip them, although watching the full amount does, um, does give me a, a touch more. Um, what are people saying? Yeah, Whiskey Wolf says cool map. Jason Whiskey Wise says Vin needs to come down to our London Whiskey Club. I do. Um, just let me know when you've got some things on and I'll see if I can get down there. Weekends are preferable. But um, yeah, let me know. It's not too far. It's only an hour away from me. Next up, Bal Blair 99. Now, this is the edition, the first release, and this was uh, bottled in 19, sorry, distilled in 99, bottled in 2015. I've only got a wee smidge of that left, so I'll be covering that soon. But um... <laughs> Jason's moderating and uh, and um, letting stuff through. Carry on, carry on, pal. Yeah, um, this is beautiful, beautiful whiskey. Airport exclusive again. Uh, I my I, someone bought me this because I was their best man. What a legend! What a legend! These two are my next most expensive whiskies. This thing here, the box, where's the box? Box up there, I won't get it out because I'll knock everything down. This thing here, this is the Chieftain's Single Malt Limited Edition Collection, Dalmore 19 years. All right? Now that doesn't sound too impressive, I suppose. Dalmore 19 years does, but this is what's impressive about the Dalmore 19 years. That is exclusively unchill filtered natural color Dalmore, which is one of my biggest complaints about Dalmore. And you can tell that's until filter. That's got bits all over it, which is. But this is absolutely sublime. I really do need to finish that because I've had this for quite a while now. Uh, a friend bought me that for my thirtieth birthday, and that's coming up to three years ago. Uh, so this was, this was actually distilled when I was ten years old. <laughs> uh, and there's only seven hundred twenty-seven bottles of this available. Perfect. Uh, Eric, wait, I pay for YouTube Premium, so I don't ever see it. Yeah, me too, pal. I, I pay for YouTube Premium as well, and I can't recommend it to people enough because not only does uh, you, you never get to see an advert ever again, but, um, see, when you when you watch our videos, uh, all of our videos, sometimes you'll get an advert and sometimes you won't. YouTube's very clever about not um, over-advertising to make you uh, go somewhere else, basically. So uh, they're good at that. And um, But if you have Premium, the person whose video you're watching gets a small amount of money no matter what, whether you watch an advert, whether you would have watched an advert or not. So it's something, it works out something like a couple of cents, you know, five cents or something like that for every view. But um, that is one of the best ways of supporting creators. So you can go and do Patreon and things like that and Super Chats, things like that. But that helps one person and doesn't really help you um, a lot. But if you subscribe to YouTube Premium, YouTube Red or whatever it's called these days, uh, it, you get loads of benefits, like just literally no adverts ever again, but you get to do things on your iPad, like watching, you get to listen to the audio, even when the app's closed, you can close the app and carry on. So if you're in the car or whatever, you can listen to music. It's pretty good. Jason's saying, um, I have many drums to share with you, fella. Help with that map behind. Perfect. I need all the help that I can get. This is my last one. I think this is my last one. Um, but then we'll move on to a bit of a quiz. This is the most expensive bottle I ever bought. I did cover this earlier this year. Nobody's searching for it, so uh, it didn't get many views. The Glenmorangie Yolanta Private Edition. This was the, oh, 
I want to say fourth. I want to say fourth. Um, I tried this at a festival. The first festival I went to and fell in love with it immediately. But I wasn't, uh, I didn't have much money back then. So um, I, it was like £66 a bottle. And I was like, I can't spend that on a bottle. Anyway, it sold out. Jim Murray um, voted it the best whiskey in the world of that year. And it just disappeared. Went on to secondary markets and I ended up paying £185, including shipping and fees for this thing. Um, I wouldn't do it again, but it's been worth every penny, this this whiskey. It's probably one of the best whiskies I've ever tried. Uh, absolutely sublime. And I may treat myself to a little sample of that once I finish this one. So that's my collection, really. Um, it's not an exceptional amount of bottles, for sure. But um, it's good enough. It's good enough. Yeah, Jason's saying that that bottle's £350 in London. Insane. Absolutely insane. I should never have paid that much for that, but I did. I did. Uh, Casper Thompson's just come in. Um, we've, we've gone through the collection, pal, but we're going to be doing a quiz any minute. Uh, we've got 32 people, so who's... Who's up for the quiz? I know uh, Roy likes to ask this. So uh, make sure you um, chuck down below if you're interested in the quiz. It's going to be a bit of fun. I'm going to be keeping score. Uh, and there's even a tiebreaker at the end to make sure there's a definite winner. But um, you, may, you, may, you may get a prize, you may not get a prize. Put it that way. So who's up for some quizzing? I'm going to leave all these up here because so I don't have to lean down again. Jason's up for the quiz. Connor should be up for the quiz if he's still around. He's probably gone though, isn't he? First answer is Mars Pan. Damn, how did you know? <laughs> okay. There he is. Connor's in. Quiz. Okay. So, for this quiz, um, I'm going to do it almost exactly the same way Roy does it. It's only five questions and one tiebreaker. Uh, the tiebreaker should be pretty good, but I, I need to do things quickly so that nobody cheats. Um, so I'm going to read out the uh, the question. Oh, I've lost my chat. Hold on, hold on. Technical issues. Where is the chat gone? There you are. Right. Uh, I'll read out the question. I'll say three, two, one, same as Roy does, and go. You're going to put the answers down, and I'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds and say stop. And then uh, you guys keep track of your own scores if you can. No cheating. And uh, and then I'll kind of tot it up at the end. But really, it's going to be whoever gets the tiebreaker that wins this one, I'll be honest with you, because they're not that difficult. It's only a bit of fun. Okay. Everyone ready for question one? So remember... When I do the three, two, one, go, that's when you put the answers in. If you get down there too early, you're only going to be helping other people, right? So question one, name the three distilleries that make up the Habiki blends. Name the three distilleries that make up the Habiki blends. Not after alphabetical order or anything like that, just the three distilleries. All right, everybody ready? Three, two, one. Put them in. I'm not sure how long my delay is, so we'll see. I'm also not too bothered about the spellings. Like I said, it's only a bit of fun. It's only a bit of fun. As if I just necked to Highland Park 21. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds just to get some more in, and I am going to pour some Glenmorangie Atlanta. Right, okay, we've got four people playing, and three or four of you got it. Three or four of you got it. Whiskey Wolf almost got it. The Cheetah was the third one. So, yeah, it was uh, Yamazaki, Akushu, and Cheetah. <laughs> Eric, Toyota, Suzuki, and Honda. Not far off, not far off, not far off. Okay, so yeah, that's Yamazaki, Hakushu, and Cheetah. Perfect. Okay, this one's a bit of a, again, a bit of a joke. Which whiskey tuber used to, he doesn't do it anymore, 
in his reviews, he would say, now let's go on to my review style structure. So which whiskey tuber would say, now we go on to my review style structure. Three, two, one, put it in. I know somebody will get this. <laughs> More people than I thought are getting it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I didn't even tell Jason I was going to do that. Sorry, pal. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well done, everybody. I think most people got that. Um, well, you either got it or you just didn't, didn't have any clue whatsoever. A bit unfair, but never mind. So next question, if we're ready. I think we're ready. Yeah, we're ready. Next question. Jack and Stephen Teeling founded the Teeling Distillery. But which distillery did their father, John Teeling, found in 1987? So that's Jack and Stephen Teeling founded the Teeling Distillery. But which distillery did their father, John Teeling, found in 1987? Three, two, one, go. It's good. I quite like the delay because it means I get to sit here and enjoy some whiskey while I'm waiting for stuff to happen. Uh, nice and easy. Like I said, everybody knows stuff like this. I, should, I shouldn't say everybody. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? The next one might be a bit harder. <laughs> Whiskey Wolf, sorry, buddy. I know it's tough, isn't it? When I did when I did the quiz uh, with Roy, I got two out of ten right, and I was live. And I was face on camera. I was absolutely devastated, mainly because he didn't tell me that he was going to do it, and he kind of uh, um, let's say backed me into a corner about it. So it was cool. It was cool. Um, don't worry, Jason. Not bothered about spellings on this at all. Um, I'm gonna check back later and. Um, is everyone keeping track of their own scores? Please tell me you're being honest about it as well. Right, next one, another YouTube one. This one's a toughie, and I, in fact, I'll give a bonus point out for this as well. I'll give a bonus point if you can get the month and the year, but the answer is the year. Which year did Ralphie first publish on YouTube? Which year did Ralphie first publish on YouTube? If you can get the month as well, take a guess. Uh, and I'll give you an extra bonus point if you get it. Three, two, one. Put it in. Now I'm going to be going to be harsh on this one because uh, after I say stop, then uh, I'm going to have to call it in case anyone goes and checks. ROI. Take a punt on the year. I take a punt on the on the month. Got a couple of people coming in, 2009, March 2009, 2008, Feb 2009, 2008. I knew this would be a toughie. It'd be a toughie. Ah, oh, Eric Gilbert. You've been chatting. I didn't see your name. Welcome anyway. Okay, so I'm calling that one now. Stop, stop, stop. So it was February 2009. I went back and checked it today. His first three were released on, in fact, I think it was the 19th of February, 2009. So it's been going nine and a half years. So uh, if I, I think Jason was the only one to get that bang on. Well done, Jason. Well done. It could all change. It could all change. He can have a bonus point. Poor lad's going to be getting my crap prize. Just got home, says Eric. Sorry, pal. I know I'll just try and start later, but it's going to be my bedtime soon enough. Okay. Question five, last question, and then uh, it's a tiebreaker. So this one might be, it'll be easy to people who know uh, a Scotch question. Name the new distillery on the Isle of Arran. Name the new distillery on the Isle of Arran. Three, two, one, go. Connor Strang was only a month out. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> Phil says Aaron to Aaron Harder. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's the, uh, he doesn't want to be there, but he's, he's, there's no one else there to do it. A couple of people getting it right. A couple of people getting it right. I shouldn't have said that. People will be copying now. <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> okay, right. That one's called. Actually, uh, less people got that. Uh, less people knew that than I thought. Um, I only knew it because I just covered Aaron um, for a little bit. So, yeah, lag distillery was the answer there. Did I read out all the answers? I didn't, I? Yeah. Okay, right. So this is the tiebreaker. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you the current, the current subscriber count for a certain channel. And I've got the live count up here somewhere. And uh, I don't want anybody to go and check. But if you, the nearest one, the nearest one gets the bonus point. Let's say, just to be cheeky, the nearest one gets five bonus points, just so it swings it. I really want this to swing it. That's the whole point of the joke. So in the answers, I want you to put in to the nearest one, so exact ones, the nearest one, the subscriber count for Scotch Test Dummies. Three, two, one, go. Now, I'm a strict time limit on this because I don't want anybody cheating. And then I'm going to share the screen and whatever it says is what it is. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Okay, so the nearest current thing is seven hundred and sorry, seven thousand four hundred and seventy-four. Hopefully, you can see that. So, who was closest? Damn, I think Kevin Bryan was closest. Seven thousand seven hundred and seventy, seven thousand four hundred and seventy-nine. Dyslexia kicking in, and actually, a few people were really close. Whiskey throttle. 7,000, yep, yeah, I think he is the closest. By five, stop. Am I back on? I'm back on. Yep, yeah, so that means that uh, I think Kevin Bryan got that, so I'll count that up later. Give yourself five bonus points there, Kevin, um, and uh, tot it all up. That's the end of it. So if you guys can tell me what scores you got, I think, so that means there was a total of 11 points. 11 points. Ben Marnock's off. Thank you very much for joining, buddy. Absolutely appreciate you coming by. Uh, and I'll get that review of Uncle Jukes up at some point in the future. What did you all get? What did you all get? <laughs> did you get any of the other right, Kevin? Let me know. Let me know what else. I'm going to have to go through and top these up, but I'll tell you what I'll do is um, I'll, uh, I'll go through the, uh, the comments probably tomorrow and then I'll, uh, I'll reach out to whoever won and um, I'll let you know I might have something for you. I might have something for you. Definitely something that I can shit worldwide so it won't be whiskey, put it that way. Don't worry, Jason. It was, it was all a bit of a silly thing, so uh, a lot of these were... <laughs> there were stupid questions that was the point that was the point <laughs> just a little bit of fun to uh, see us through while uh, good old roy is on holiday okay well um that's it from me thanks for everyone for checking out the stream and for checking out my collection hopefully you'll see some stuff that you want to see on the channel so if there is stuff, when this stream finishes and it gets uploaded, if you don't mind coming in and posting what you want to see reviews of the most, then I will certainly bump those up the list and, uh, and get them onto the channel as soon as possible.
But again, thanks to everybody who checked it out. Thanks for checking out the quiz. A bit of fun. I'll, uh, I'll top that up and I'll get in touch with people tomorrow. But um, thanks, everybody, for joining me. And uh, I will stop the stream and get on to my uh, normal reviews. I'm not sure when I'll do another live stream, but it'll probably be somewhere in the mid-August, that sort of thing. Hopefully, I'm going to jump onto a few other people's channels and things like that and, and spread it all around a bit. But yeah, thanks, everybody, for joining in. And uh, I'll see you again on more videos. See you later.